Have you ever wondered what the journey of that banana in your pantry took to get to your door? The complexity of planning, transportation, collaboration, time and labor that went into the supply chain of that banana is pretty mind-boggling. So it all starts with the harvesting of the banana. It then gets labeled, packaged, and sent on a massive cargo freight where it's stored in a large refrigerator. Then, after the banana arrives in the country of final destination, it's required to be treated in temperature-controlled, forced ripening location for five to seven days. Finally, at this point, these bananas are ready to be shipped to grocery stores all across the U.S. U.S. retailers throw out $18 billion worth of spoiled food each year. Most of the 8 million tons of food that ends up in landfills annually are quick to spoil items like fruits, vegetables, meats, fish, dairy, and bread. Fresh food is hard to get right. Most of the technology built for this industry is built with non-perishable foods in mind. Fresh food has unique challenges such as perishability, higher sales velocity, variance in quality, different store processes, lack of barcode and expiration dates, and one of the largest hurdles in my opinion, measuring shelf life. Because food harvested on the same day can have different shelf lives. So many factors affect the freshness of the produce, such as temperature the produce is subject to. For example, a pallet of strawberries has 12 days of ideal freshness capacity, but if left in a field for 3 hours at roughly 80 degrees, it would quickly lose 3 days of shelf life. Due to these complexities, there are a lot of manual processes and human decisions. Managers at large and small grocery stores alike decide how much to order based on eyeballing and freehand calculations. These hastily decisions lead to waste. U.S. grocery stores throw out about 8% of their fresh food on average. Avoidable supply chain inefficiencies are the cause of hundreds of billions of dollars of fresh food loss each year. Enter Afresh, a startup that builds tools that help grocers reduce food waste and maximize profits by forecasting demand and optimizing decisions. They use AI to help grocers optimize their fresh food stockings. Staffers input their inventory each day, and then Afresh's machine learning algorithms are supposed to calculate how much of each product they should order and when. The goal is to help reduce spoilage while also ensuring that these stores stock enough supply to meet the demand. The software also picks up on deeper insights that humans might miss. Say that one particular apple tastes really good in mid-May. The system will learn that it tends to move quickly and will advise the store to buy more ahead of time. The company has not disclosed exact numbers yet, but what they have said is that they will charge a percentage of the money they save each retailer by reducing their waste. This business model seems like a win-win to me because it aligns up freshes and the grocer's incentives. This startup has actually been gaining some traction. They say they have paid partnerships with three U.S. grocery chains. The company won't name them, but they say that two of the grocers have more than 100 stores and a billion dollars in revenue. So while using Fresh's software, these stores reduce fresh food waste by a whopping 50% and reduce out of stocks by 80%, which translates to some serious savings. That is absolutely an incredible amount of savings. US retailers throw out $18 billion worth of spoiled food each year, and just by implementing a freshest tech, they can reduce that to just 9 billion. But imagine the savings that these grocers will be able to pass on to you if they have an extra $9 billion a year in their pockets. Okay, so let's go through the market size. There are nearly 40,000 grocery stores in the U.S., all having produce shipped to them on a near-daily basis. This leaves Afresh with a fairly large market to sell their product to. One notable retailer that Afresh may not be able to sell to is Walmart. Walmart has created their own intelligent food software. They are calling it Eden, and the main focus is to improve the quality of its perishable foods business and eliminate waste from its perishable food supply chain. Let's run through Afresh's founders. So first we have Matt Schwartz, the co-founder and CEO at Afresh. From what I can tell, he's more of the face of the business. He graduated from USC and started out his career at Bain & Company. Uh, he then went to run operations at a startup baking mix company. Then after that, he went on to found his own snack brand called Stat Foods, which he ran while attending Stanford to get his MBA and study food and agriculture. And then ultimately, while at Stanford, co-founded Afresh. Moving on to our second co-founder and current COO at Afresh, Nathan Fenner. He did his bachelor's and master's degrees in mechanical engineering from Stanford. While at Stanford, Nathan was one of the youngest ever appointed lecturers in Stanford's engineering department. Nathan also received an MBA from Stanford. And now to our final co-founder and current CTO at Afresh, Volodymyr Kulasov. 
He completed a PhD in computer science from Stanford and has been published in numerous technical papers. He has also worked on significant applications of artificial intelligence and personalized medicine and sustainability. Volodymyr seems like the very strong technical lead at a fresh. Time to talk about some competitors. All of these competitors have the same goal of reducing food waste and getting the freshest possible produce to the customers, but some of them take different approaches. For example, Zest Labs and Walmart's Eden Solutions are targeted more towards the actual producers and decreasing inefficiencies in the supply chain. So I think Afresh's competitive advantage stems from its founding team. Matt, Nathan, and Volodymyr teamed up in grad school. The trio spent thousands of hours shadowing grocery store managers to learn their processes, which allowed them to build a tool that fits into existing workflows relatively seamlessly. This puts them far ahead of their competitors in the space, and this explains why retailers have shown so much early interest. The company is also working on a tablet-based workflow, which is set to integrate with the grocer's existing system, which is a differentiating feature. On October 31st, 2017, Afresh joined the Terra Accelerator, which is a food and ag tech accelerator. Sometime in late 2017, the company raised an undisclosed amount from Escolta Ventures. Afresh started out with 10 million shares. On January 5th, 2018, they closed their seed round. They sold 2.75 million additional shares to Baseline Ventures at a price of 60 cents per share for a total of $1.65 million raised. This makes their pre-money valuation $6 million dollars uh, after their seed round, they had a total of 12.75 million shares with a post-money valuation of 7.65 million. Afresh also raised a Series A round on December 17, 2018. Afresh sold an additional 3.7 million shares valued at $1.67 per share, totaling to $6.14 million raised in this round. They raised money from Stardex and other undisclosed investors. This brings the total number of company shares to 16.45 million. At this point, Afresh has raised a total of $7.79 million. They have a pre-money valuation of $23.5 million and a post-money valuation of $29.64 million. On May 6, 2019, Afresh joined Target plus Metro Retail Accelerator as part of a summer program and received $120,000 in funding. This is great for Afresh because they gain mentorship, expertise, and will ultimately learn how to scale their business to reach mass retail. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if I missed anything. And as always, all of the links to my research will be in the description. I urge you to check it out for yourself.